Okay, we're going to go and configure some multi-area OSPF, and you'll see pretty quickly here how easy it really is to configure and how similar it is to single area. Uh, router 0 is going to be our border router, so routers 3 and 2 in the upper right here, they will be area 0, and the ones in the lower left here, routers 1 and 4, will be area 1. So what we'll do, I've, I've blanked out any dynamic routing protocols. We only have IP addresses at this point, basic connectivity. So what I'm going to do is just start from the outside and make, work my way in. So for router 1, uh, we're going to go ahead and do router, OSPF, and we can, we're going to use the same process on all these routers to illustrate how the process ID doesn't matter. Even though there's multi areas, we can still use just one process ID. So process ID 1, and I'm going to define my networks. So over here we have uh, this switch 0 off to the left. That was 192.168.4.0. And I'm going to say that's area 1. I also have to put this link here into area 1, since I want 0 to be my uh, router 0 to be my border router. So I have to also define this one. So that's going to be network. 10, 0, 0. This was dot 12. Remember, it's wildcard mask, so we do dot 3. Since it's a slash 30 network there, and we're going to say area 1. And I'm going to ignore the passive interface for now because it doesn't really matter for illustrative purposes. We're going to go to router OSPF 1. We're on router 4 now. I'm going to do network 192.168.3.0. 000, 255 area 1 network 10000 dot um, this was 8 0003 area 1 so now both interfaces on these two routers are set to area 1 I'm going to go to my central router and we're going to configure that as well so router OSPF 1 network and I don't have to define these 192s, obviously just the two links to these two routers. So I'm going to say I want to talk to you guys on area 1. So dot 12, dot 3, area 1. And you'll probably see a message pop up here. Yep, there it is. It'll take a few seconds for this to uh, converge. So we just have to wait a minute for this to show up. There we go. So now we have our two routes for these 192 networks on our router 0 and that through area 1. We do, do uh, show IP protocols. You see we have OSPF 1, area 1, there's our routes. We're going to go to our other two routers and do basically the same thing. This was 1.0. This will be area 0 up here. This was a dot zero network. There we go. This is really all we have to do. I mean it's with the exception of passive interface right now it's three commands. This is how uh, easy it is to configure a dynamic routing protocol, even a complex one like OSPF from a basic perspective. It's uh, very simple. Now on our main router, we have to then add those two 10 dot networks so we can connect to routers 3 and routers 2. So I'm already in router OSPF1, router config mode. Uh, so we just need to do network 10.0.0.0. Tell it that's on area 0. And we're going to get some messages, which is fine. going to give it a second to converge. We already have one route pop in there. There we go. 
So now we have our routes. So I'm at the central router, and I have routes to the dot one, 192.168.1, and dot four from my central router. Let's go take a look at one of these other routers. And there we go. So I'm on router one. This is a member of area one, but I also have routes to those networks in area area zero. The ones that are shown in area area zero show with this inter area route. So it's telling me this is we're we're traversing into another area. And you can see that in the codes here. If we find it, there it is. Inter area IA. So it's learned through OSPF. It's traversing through another area, so it's inter area. And we can get to those networks through these interfaces. So then we get to router zero. Router zero will then say, oh yep, I know how to get there. Send it up to router three. Router 3 will say, yep, I know how to get to that network. It's directly connected. So that is the basics of how to configure multi-area OSPF. We can still do passive interface on these uh, 192 networks, so we don't send uh, hello packets and, and LSAs and such out these interfaces. Uh, we can still do some tweaks with the hello timers. We can uh, create uh, loopbacks and such. You can do whatever you want. It all still works as uh, previously described. The only difference being we have this border router that is a member of both areas. And if you noticed, if we do show IP protocol, I'm running one process of OSPF, but I have networks in both areas. So you don't have to make a separate OSPF process for each area that you're a member of you can have it all run under one process of OSPF and this could be a member of you know 10 areas it doesn't matter uh, it depends on how you want to design your network so from here uh, we'll go we'll probably break into OSP or uh, eGrip next and uh, move on through some of the more detailed information on eGrip and then start talking about uh, firewalling and access control lists and uh, wide area connections.